Hallie Laura Channel, you're watching Uber loses top court fight as EU judges take aim at gig economy. Uber Technologies Inc. suffered a defeat after the European Union's top court ruled its ride-hailing service should be regulated as a transport company, a decision that could set a precedent for the burgeoning gig economy. The EU's Court of Justice said Wednesday that the world's most valuable startup should be regulated as a transport service when drivers aren't professionals and they are using their own vehicles. The company says most of its products are already covered by such regulations. The decision, which can't be appealed, clarifies for the first time that connecting people via an application to non-professional drivers forms an integral part of a transport service. It rejects Uber's view that such services are purely digital. The service provided by Uber connecting individuals with non-professional drivers is covered by services in the field of transport, the EU Court of Justice in Luxembourg said Wednesday. EU nations can therefore regulate the conditions for providing that service. Uber has argued that it's a technology platform connecting passengers with independent drivers, not a transportation company subject to the same rules as taxi services. It's the first ruling by the Bloc's court on how an app such as Uber should be qualified and it has been closely watched by the technology industry because of its precedent for how firms in the gig economy ought to be regulated across the 28-nation Bloc. Millions of Europeans This ruling will not change things in most EU countries where we already operate under transportation law, Uber said in a statement. However, millions of Europeans are still prevented from using apps like ours. As our new CEO has said, it is appropriate to regulate services such as Uber and so we will continue the dialogue with cities across Europe, said Uber. The case centers around UberPop, an inexpensive ride-hailing service in several European cities that allowed drivers without a taxi license to use their own cars to pick up passengers. Legal challenges have forced Uber to shutter UberPop in most major European countries in favor of UberX, which requires drivers to get a license. We regret the judgment effectively threatens the application of harmonized EU rules to online intermediaries, said Jacob Koharczyk, of the Computer and Communications Industry Association, which speaks for companies like Uber, Amazon.com Inc., Google, and Facebook Inc. Online Innovations The purpose of those rules is to make sure online innovators can achieve greater scalability and competitiveness in the EU, unfettered from undue national restrictions, he said. After today's judgment innovators will increasingly be subject to divergent national and sectoral rules. This is a blow to the EU's ambition of building an integrated digital single market. Uber isn't the only business model being questioned by policymakers. In Paris, regulators are clamping down on Airbnb, whose home rental service has drawn complaints from hotels that are subject to a different batch of rules. Deliveroo, the food delivery service, is also facing scrutiny over its treatment of workers in the UK and elsewhere. Europe is taking a stricter approach to regulating American tech giants. Yesterday, regulators in Germany accused Facebook of violating antitrust laws by using data it collects on users, while France's top privacy regulator told WhatsApp to stop sharing user data from the app with Facebook, which bought the messaging service in 2014. The European Commission has also levied billions of dollars in collective fines against Apple, Google and Amazon over unfair business practices. The ruling adds to the challenges facing Uber CEO Dara Khosro Shahi, who wants to take the company public by 2019. Boardroom Battle Since joining in August, Khosro Shahi has faced a boardroom battle with Uber co-founder Travis Kalanick a headline-grabbing lawsuit alleging the company stole autonomous car technology from Alphabet Incorporated S. Waymo, various government investigations, the threat of losing its taxi license in its biggest European market of London, and revamping a company culture considered unwelcoming for women, among other controversies. Meanwhile, the company continues to lose money and faces a growing roster of well-funded rivals, from LYFT in the US, to China's Didi Chuxing in Asia. The case is, C434-15, Association Professional Elite Taxi. Blow to Uber in Europe as top court rules it's a transport service. 
Europe's top court has provided the final verdict on a multi-years legal challenge brought by EU taxi associations to Uber's claim that it's just a technology platform with the CJEU today ruling it's a transport service. The judgment means Uber must comply with individual member states' transportation regulations, rather than seeking to circumvent such rules. In its ruling the court writes that Uber's intermediation service, the purpose of which is to connect, by means of a smartphone application and for remuneration, non-professional drivers using their own vehicle with persons who wish to make urban journeys, must be regarded as being inherently linked to a transport service and, accordingly, must be classified as a service in the field of transport within the meaning of EU law. Consequently, such a service must be excluded from the scope of the freedom to provide services in general as well as the Directive on Services in the Internal Market and the Directive on Electronic Commerce. It follows that, as EU law currently stands, it is for the member states to regulate the conditions under which such services are to be provided in conformity with the general rules of the Treaty on the Functioning of the EU, it adds. Responding to the court's verdict, a Uber spokesperson emailed this statement, this ruling will not change things in most EU countries where we already operate under transportation law. However, millions of Europeans are still prevented from using apps like ours. As our new CEO has said, it is appropriate to regulate services such as Uber and so we will continue the dialogue with cities across Europe. This is the approach we'll take to ensure everyone can get a reliable ride at the tap of a button. The original legal challenge was filed in 2014 by a professional taxi drivers association in Barcelona seeking a declaration from that court that the activities of Uber Systems Spain amount to misleading practices and acts of unfair competition. In order to determine that matter, the court decided it needed a judgment on whether the services provided by Uber are transport services, information society services or a combination of both. Hence the case being referred to the CJEU. While the court's verdict is certainly a blow to Uber's expansion ambitions in Europe, the company does already operate under transportation regulations in some European markets, such as in London. Albeit, it has currently has its license to operate there withdrawn for unrelated reasons. So Uber's contention is that the judgment will not change how it operates in most EU countries. The ruling also only pertains to Uber's peer-to-peer -peer ride hailing services which have long faced out and out bans in some European markets, such as France and Spain. In some of these markets Uber has gone on to relaunch professional services, i.e. non-P2P ride hailing, including in Berlin and Madrid apparently complying with local transport rules. Although in Spain, at least, Local taxi associations are still striking and protesting at the presence of Uber and other ride-hailing firms, claiming rules which are supposed to limit the number of taxi licenses to operate are being broken. Uber suffers setback as EU rules that it's a transport service, not a digital company. The European Court of Justice ruled Wednesday that the US ride-hailing app is a transportation firm and not a digital company. This ruling will not change things in most EU countries where we already operate under transportation law, an Uber spokesperson said in an email shortly after the decision. Uber has long considered itself an information society service which connects drivers and passengers through intermediation via their app. Uber is a taxi company, according to a landmark ruling from Europe's highest court. The European Court of Justice, ECJ ruled Wednesday that the U.S. ride-hailing app is a transportation firm and not a digital company. The verdict is a long-awaited judgment expected to have major implications for how Uber is regulated throughout Europe. The service provided by Uber connecting individuals with non-professional drivers is covered by services in the field of transport, the ECJ said. Member states can therefore regulate the conditions for providing that service, it added. Uber has long considered itself an information society service which connects drivers and passengers through intermediation via their app. This subtle classification has helped to protect the multi-billion dollar startup from national regulations and means it has been treated as a digital service operating across borders in the EU's single market. However, several European governments have argued the US company should be considered a taxi firm, and just like thousands of others, it should have to comply with European transport laws. 
This ruling will not change things in most EU countries where we already operate under transportation law. However, millions of Europeans are still prevented from using apps like ours, a Uber spokesperson said in an email shortly after the decision. The ECJ's decision means Uber now faces national regulation in up to 28 member states, forcing it to deal more closely with local governments that set transportation rules and licensing requirements. This particular case cannot be appealed, according to Reuters, but it can pursue legal challenges in other courts. How did we get here? In 2014, a group called Elite Taxi in Barcelona asked a court in the city to impose penalties on Uber's operations in the country. The association claimed that Uber was engaging in unfair competition towards Elite Taxi's drivers, particularly with its Uber Pop service which allowed non-licensed drivers to pick up passengers via the app. The case was escalated eventually to the European Union's highest court the ECJ for advice. Advocate General Meshij Spunner said in May that, in his opinion, Uber is not an information society service. To be considered such would mean the part of the service which is not made by electronic means is economically independent of the service. In Uber's case, the drivers would need to be economically I. independent. Another factor to be considered is whether Uber provides the entire offering. For example, an online retailer has a website or app as well as shipping the goods it sells. In Uber's case, this would mean it essentially employs the drivers. Uber has said that its drivers do not work for the company and are independent. The ECJ advisor said that Uber does not meet either of these two conditions and is therefore a transportation company. Uber's European Challenges Uber launched in Europe five years ago and has since had a number of clashes with regulators as well as traditional taxi companies which have protested against the US firm, which is worth around $66 billion. In London, UK, for example, Uber lost an appeal to a court which said that drivers on the platform must pass a strict English language test. In Italy, a court in Rome decided to suspend the app, but this injunction has been halted for now by a higher court. And in Denmark, Uber said in March it would shut down its operations in the country thanks to new rules. However, the company has made strides to work with regulators. It is still operating in most EU countries and last year relaunched UberX in both Berlin and Madrid after being banned in the country, after it complied with local laws. Greg Marsh, co-founder and CEO of One of Finesse, told CNBC Wednesday that the majority of Uber drivers really value the company and the ride-hailing service was clearly wildly popular among consumers. If the majority of people want to use it as consumers and if a large proportion of the people who want to participate in it as drivers want it to exist then it seems a bit illiberal to say that we should be preventing it from operating, he added. Thank you, please share video and subscribe my channel for more video.